Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Another day on the farm here. We have some interesting stuff going on. Show you what I got. I'm going to do some uh, trailer upgrades, maintenance, stuff like that. First, I'm going to show you another little doohickey I made for moving a trailer around real easy. I made an attachment for the three point. So, I got a little nice uh, trailer ball up there. The uh, regular, what was it? Uh, ew, Samiri. Oh, I forget. Well, the standard size gooseneck ball. And then I used a, uh, a wrist pin for a piston and connecting rod for the top link there. And just a regular pipe for the bottom. Welded everything up, hot schnozzed it on there pretty good. And it works just for an empty trailer. I never haul a full trailer with it. So yeah, let's see, uh, I'll grab the trailer, back it in the shop and uh, get ready for some maintenance. As you can see, that worked really slick there. Got the uh, kitty inspector. So yeah, this thing's a multi-function little tool that I made. Also a nice big old D-ring for towing anything. Tried to put it on the lowest possible spot so the tractor wouldn't wheelie. But yeah, 
really pulls in the trailer real nice and easy. Had the wife help me uh, stop before any damage occurred. So yeah, locked it previously. So what I'm going to do today is I got the chain locker, got all the chains in here and binders and good fun stuff. But right here, there's just a lip. It's just curled over, just whoop, and stops right there. It loves to catch chain. What I'm going to do is I'm going to weld a pipe. Nice heavy wall pipe. I forgot where I put it. It's somewhere around here. Oh, well, I don't... Gosh. Oh, this is my auto shop, by the way. There's a little, little car under there. You know, got the shop doggers. Doggos. But yeah, I'm also going to change these plastic hubs to these fun guys. Let me just uh, bring this over here and show you. But uh, let me see. Dunk. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the plastic ones to these nice, nice aluminum ones with the sight glass and rubber cap and nice uh, O-ring in there. So I'm going to do that. But uh, And this one is from Valcrum Hubcap. And these are Dexter Oil Bath 8K axles. So I got two of them. So, real nice, and yeah, we'll go uh, put those suckers on there. Then I'll uh, find some steel and go from there. All right. All right, we're over here at the uh, left side rear axle. Got this little moldable funnel thing. Get my schmoo catcher, and get this in there, and finagle it. Just to get it, most of it. Of course it does that. Eh, just lay it right there, it'll be fine. Already loosened this a little bit, so, you know, magic of editing. All right. Do that guy. Yeah, that sucker was on there nice. There that goes. All right, well. Kind of nice to also change the axle oil. We got the. Come on. There we go. At least now I have extra. Of course. New rag. All of them. All right. Grab my 90 weight. new one fits. Use the tiniest bit of 90 weight to just lube that seal. Of course, I also clean the flange. That flange is looking dirty. Like there's some rust in there. So let's see if we can just keep that from just totally getting in the bearings. I'll wash that out a little bit. Alrighty. Yep, pretty dirty. truth. All right, so I got a socket here that sort of fits. 25 to 30 foot-pounds. Of course, 
course, this is already way too large. But I'm just going to snug it on there with the snap on Big Mama and click click perfect she ain't going anywhere all right so it looks nice and installed now to fill it up or do the other ones obviously but I'll fill them up as I go so yeah real easy swap over um, yeah Alrighty, so I finished the install on both sides here and I just filled them up and waiting for them to uh, drain down a little bit and check the oil after my next project. The other thing that I like about these guys is if you look at their uh, cap here, they got a vent hole for you know when the bearing gets hot, but they have a little stopper in there so stuff can't get in, it can just get out. I don't know if you guys can see that. But yeah, so I noticed that my, uh, you know, internals on my hubs were a little rusty. Just a little coating of rust. I'm like, why is that? I mean, it's full of oil. But what happens is when uh, bearings get hot, positive pressure builds and then blows out. But when they cool down, there's a, neg or there's a reverse effect where it's a little bit of a vacuum. And we live in a very, very, very humid area. So when they cool, they suck in moist air and therefore we had rust in there so hopefully this prevents it and uh yeah cool little feature on that uh little valve there all right all right ladies and gentlemen uh the next thing here is to check tire pressure and these guys at uh lock and lube got what they call lock inflate it's pretty cool it has these little uh grabby paws there that grab onto the threads of the valve stem. So, let's see how it works. All right, pretty good, 100 PSI. Let's put a little more in there. A little more in there. Yeah, so, as you can see, it's on there pretty good, but this is 110 PSI, so there's a little bit of leakage. You get it right. Then, you just take it off. So yeah, there you go. need to be perfect. So this is just a regular uh, Porter Cable, you know, uh, grinding wheel. But I got the Trick Tools belt sander adapter. Sucker works great. I didn't put on the uh, round disc sander. I just put on the belt. It's really easy to change. Yeah, worth every penny. And I mean, the belts I got, I don't know which they are. They're Deer Foss. PZ628. I don't know what they are, but they last a good long time. This thing runs real smooth. You get the belt tracking correct. Man, the thing's wonderful. All right, hope that helps.
Okay, so the problem I'm having, not really a problem, just a little nitpicky, but when I remove chains because of this lip right here, it's really, really noisy and it catches, and sometimes the end of the chain likes to hook right there. It's just really annoying, especially on the binders. So, I'll show you after on how this, this sounds and works. All right. All right. For this little job, I'm going to be using my cute little Miller Thunderbolt 210. You can go all the way up to 210 amps. Of course, you can't weld very long on that. Let me show you the uh, duty cycle on this thing. So, you can see here that 94 amps at 100% that's pretty darn good and I mean I don't use much more than 120 so you can go 60 percent so yeah I really like to take it easy on my stuff but I mean look at the size of this thing this thing is tiny it works good nice stick welder simple I use a stick welder because welding argon co2 mix gas is stupidly expensive so I try to stick weld where I can Alrighty. Ducky, I'm just going to be using 6011. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. All right. Let's see if I can make a complete fool of myself online. Gotta get clampage. Everything is single-handed, of course. All right, that looks good there. Turn on the helmet. All right, let's do some welding in the dark. You don't like me. That's ugly, but it'll work. Alrighty, so what I did here, as you can see the pipe here, tacked in, just in three spots, so in case I ever need to remove it, sorry about the lighting. So over here, over here, and over here, I'll paint that up later. But now, this thing flows, flows much freer. I don't know. It was just a uh, little thing that I wanted to do. So, yeah. Alrighty. That concludes this trailer update. So hopefully this works. If not, I'll just cut it out because I just put tacks in there. Alright. So, check on these hubs again. See how much they drain down. 
Oh, they're staying nice and up there. I think we got it. Yeah, I think we got it. Alrighty. Don't mind the sweatiness or the lighting. All right. Shameless plug. Like and subscribe, please. Aloha.